Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the relationship between scan interval and using intermittent emissions. Now what you're go probably going to see here is an interesting little, I don't want to call it a gamey strategy, but at the same point is it's a totally viable strategy. And there's a lot of little pieces in here that sometimes it'll work, sometimes it won't, just like it is in the real world. So let's take a look at our situation here. We have ourselves a dog ear radar. Uh, for those of you not familiar with this, this is basically kind of an early warning radar for things like the SA-13 and the SA-9. So if you open up the details of that real quick, uh, scroll down just a teeny tiny bit, we can see we have the 9S80 radar, which is about 40 miles, 1970s technology, but more importantly, if you take a look, it has a scan interval of five. What does five mean? Five means that this interval has the capability of looking around the entire sky in five seconds. That's really important for us because that tells us how fast the radar is actually rotating. So if we were to take 360 divided by five, we know that our radar covers 72 degrees per second of the sky. Now you're sitting there going, well, that's, that's yeah, so why, why do we care? Well, the reason we care is because when a radar sweeps across the sky, it basically acts as a giant flashlight that is now rotating as it makes its way doing this 360 degree turn. That giant flashlight is only visible to the people who are looking at that giant flashlight and who are being blasted in the face with it. So if my radar is facing over here and I'm over here, I won't know that that radar is pointing in that direction, which means if I'm trying to detect it with something such as an RWR, I'm going to get no warning until it swings around the other way. Now, things get a little more complicated with the RWR, however. Now, if you take our EC-130H compass call, this is a very, very sophisticated aircraft, lots of electronic equipment on board. If I were to go over sensors real fast, you'll see that as an ANALR-63 electronic intelligence platform. That is an amazing piece of equipment. It basically gives you the ability to detect incoming electronic emissions. Now, if I scroll down a little bit and click on this ANALR-63, you'll be surprised to find out that it has a scan interval of 20 seconds which means it now takes 20 seconds to identify any particular electronic emissions. Now, again, I'm going to say this very, very precisely here, that when you are detecting electronic emissions, there's always a chance that you're going to get a little taste of it within that 20 second looking around period. So there's two different things we have to evaluate here. The first one is how long does that 20 seconds actually take? And then the second thing is how long does our five seconds actually take for our dog ear radar? So let's go ahead and unpause real quickly. I'm going to go ahead and save everything real fast so we can quickly refresh it. I'm going to go back down to my lovely uh, little red guys here. Uh, they've got my dog ear radar. He is set to go ahead and emit, and uh, we're just going to take a look at the clock here. We are at uh, 1,900 hours even. Space bar. 01, 02, 03, 04, 05. Now you'll notice exactly at 05, we suddenly identified a target. You'll notice the time that it read, it wasn't actually 05 after, it was actually 04 after when the radar finished doing its sweep across the sky. And you'll notice we were able to detect that target. Uh, we've got a lot of good information here. We have some range. We know who detected it. And it took us about four seconds. So if you want to imagine it, probably the radar started facing 90 degrees, came all the way around, and it just was about to finish its 90 degree sweep when it smacked into our potential target here. Now let's switch over to the other guys real fast. You'll notice that our compass call, even though he had a 20 second interval, was still able to get a taste of that radar and know that he was being eliminated. That's because most antennas on these sort of systems are going to be in set in a way that they're omnidirectional. They actually face every direction listening for it. As a matter of fact, if we were to go to sensors real quick, we could actually define if we wanted to do, again, I'm not going to do this completely, but I'll show you what it would look like. If I were to grab some ESM here and go ahead and make it detectable, I can actually make it so it only picks up on one side of the aircraft, for example. If we actually hit our compass call real fast, take a look at this we'll see that that antenna is actually omnidirectional. So it has the ability to see electronics in all direction. So even though its scan interval was high, it was still able to pick that up, even though, like I said, only five seconds have passed. Now our dark gear on the flip side has only gone around once with this radar dish, and it does know where this particular target is. But unfortunately, as you can see here, we actually were detected on multiple different platforms. Our F-14s over here in the woods here, not really the woods, that'd be the Rocky Mountains, also picked it up. Now, the initial instinct that most people have is like, well, wait a minute, how, how big of a difference is, can I kind of game this? Uh, a little bit. Let me show you what I mean. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to speed up time a little bit. I'll let the dog ear radar ping away. So um, now our dog ear radar has gone around six revolutions. Uh, you're saying, but comrade, how do you know the revolutions? Uh, the way that I know this is because that we know five seconds, 
30 divided by 5, you get 6 or so. So we've gone around 6 times, and uh, we have a pretty confident fix on where that dog ear is. Now, if I was a uh, more tactician here, I'd take these guys and i put them over here so you get a little triangulation thing. They can identify exactly where that dog ear radar is, but I'm not going to do that because I just don't need to. That's not the point of the video. So let's go back to the other team. Uh, we are very confident about the position of this particular one. We're actually so confident that the TV camera on board the SA-2 has actually identified the target and says it's probably an OECM platform of some kind. Not bad. Obviously, if you turn on his jammer, this would be a much shorter video. So let's see if we can game the system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to load this up again. And what I'm going to do a little differently is I'm going to grab my dog ear radar. I love these things. I've blown up so many of these in DCS. I almost feel bad. I'm going to grab this one again. I'm going to go up to Control F9. Go over at MCON settings, and I'm going to define a custom MCON setting here. Custom continuous mode. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to order him to emit for exactly five seconds. And then after five seconds, I'm going to have him just chill for about 30 seconds before re-emitting. Of course, you can put the uh, random interval in here if you want to have a little bit of fun with that, but that's not required. Uh, sleep mode, obviously, if somebody gets close by, I'm actually not going to turn this on. I don't want him to do that. He's not an attack platform. If you were an attack platform, I would enable that. So now what we've done is we've ordered him to flip his radar on for five seconds, shut the radar off, and then go ahead and take a look around again. So let's go ahead and save real quick because uh, there'll be a little bit of shenanigans, I pinky promise here. So he flips his radar on. Uh, fortunately, he's going to emit for the full 30 seconds here before he uh, switches to that other mode. Or at least I think that it says that. It doesn't actually... Ah, there he is. Eh, five seconds, four seconds, three. Okay, pause. I actually want to get him halfway through. I'm going to drop that radar contact just to be fair. Four, three, two... One, it should acquire the contact. Oh, off. So now the radar is going to shut itself off. In that sweep of the sky, it just did not have enough time to acquire the compass call. So we'll let it go around again. And radar's on. So remember, it takes five seconds for him to complete a sweep of the sky. One, zero. And there it is. Got it. And you'll notice that two seconds ago, so about, uh, if you imagine he was pointing the radar this way, he got to about this point, and the beam width actually caught the edge of this. We were able to acquire our target here about two seconds ago, which is fair, because um, that means as long as I have enough time to look around the sky, I have enough time to acquire a potential target. Now, I don't know about you, but as a person who's run some radars in the Sam Sim, that's a pretty impressive feat. I don't think I could do that. Um, that's, that's on point. That, that's, that's some good radar work right there. I can't do that. All right, so we have the EC-130, and we've gotten a taste of this strange radar here. And we detected uh, two seconds ago that we picked up the E of this particular one. But our F-14s also got a taste of that particular signal as well. And you'll notice that the propagation of the simple signal is a little different for the F-14s who are much farther away. And they also have different equipment, which has a different scanning interval. As a matter of fact, if we were to open up the F-14B real quickly here, open this sucker up, uh, we have an ALR-67. Of course we do. Five seconds, so it's actually a much quicker scan interval, to, uh, which, which makes sense. It makes sense. It won't be as accurate, but it'll at least be able to pick things up that are dangerous sooner. So now, of course, we know that there's a dog ear radar out there somewhere, and we have a pretty good idea of where it is. Our Tomcats, of course, uh, because they have lantern pods, could get close enough and actually look down on the ground and see this thing just kind of hanging out there. But meanwhile, of course, they don't have a good fix. So if we were to try to start launching harms at this poor dog ear here, uh, we would have to have a slightly better idea of where the target is in order to actually engage them. So you can see that all we've really done here is we've delayed how long it takes for our actual dog ear radar to be detected. We have not prevented it to be detected again. One of the other things you have to worry about electronically in the real world is called side lobes. Because uh, when you shoot your radar beam out, this flashlight, you get some light out the side, which a lot of these equipments can actually detect, even though they're not being blasted in the face by it directly. Just one of those kind of radar engineering problems. Really, really fun, by the way. You can solve this with phased array radars, but I'm nerding out. I'll go ahead and stop. So um, how can we use this? And technically, well, let's go back to our original situation here. I'm actually going to delete my dog air radar. And I'm going to pop in an SA-8. We're going to use a classic SA-8 here. We're going to do an SA-A because I'm feeling generous. I'll <laughs> give the Americans a chance here. And what I'm going to do is design the S8 so they're kind of off in the woods here. Now, to make things interesting, I'm not going to have any other search radars anywhere here. And the other thing I'm going to do, too, is you notice the local time is 11 a.m. Not really fair. So uh, what I'm going to do is actually make this the middle of the night. And the reason I'm making this the middle of the night is to make it a little bit more fair for our um, American friends over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the S8 here as an early morning platform. Now, the SA-8, if you actually know it, there's this fold-over radar. I think you can just see it right here in the back. Now, this thing floats, by the way. And what you do is you pop it up, and it spins around really, 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 really fast and looks around. As a matter of fact, if you were to scroll down real quickly and hit land roll, Baza, 
come down here, you'll actually see that we have a little bit of capabilities here, not the world's fanciest search radar that they have here. Now, if you're familiar with other ones, this is the ZSU-23 here. Everybody knows this one. How many times have you been hit by one of these in a flight sim, right? If you were to scroll down on this one, you'll also notice that it has a little gun dish, and this can be used as a search radar, believe it or not, in addition to, you know, a direct fire control radar. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use this one as a little kind of let's take a look around kind of platform sort of a thing like that. Now, it's worth noting at this point that if I were trying to use the radar that's on the front, that's the fire control radar on this thing, aggressively to like try to look around, it would be like looking through a straw. It'd be very challenging. So we really do need that little radar chilling on the back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and press Control F9 again. I'm going to go down to MCON settings. I'm going to go ahead and hit continuous mode here. You can see my mission duration is uh, pretty fast. Now, if you remember, this one had a two second capability here, two second scanner. It only takes two seconds to cover the sky here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a three second emission duration and I'm going to give it 30 seconds of relaxation. That seems pretty legit. And obviously, if anybody gets really, really close, um, we're not going to go back to sleep until um, obviously we've dealt with the threat. Now, watch what happens here. So go ahead and unpause. So let's go ahead and grab our American friends here. Oh, let's see here. Um, we have no knowledge of that SA, by the way. Um, we have, of course, the compass call. I'll go put them up here because I'm a jerk. So you get that nice triangulation effect. We have our two F 14s. I'm going to order them down to low altitude. Somehow I remembered to do that last time. And we're just going to cruise along. Now, what you probably observe here is the fact that we're not being painted by anybody right now. Those SA 8s down there, if I actually press Control V real quickly, you'll notice that they are happily turning their radars on, shutting them off. Turning their radars on, shutting them off. And you can see they're basically pulsing those radars, but they're staying within that undetectable range. So basically, we've created a very, very poor man's LPI here. <laughs> Low probability of intercept, by the way. All right, so we're going to come on down. Now we're going to swing in to get ready to do our little strike down here. We'll go ahead and do one of these things. We'll go ahead and do one of these things, and I will go ahead and swing to the other team real quickly. Now, here's where things get interesting. If you take a look, um, we have no clue that there's two F-14s coming down here. Now, you're sitting there going, wait, what? That's, that's not how that works. It, it, they're, they're supposed to detect it. Well, if you looked really, really, really carefully, and this is a, one of those things that it's like, ah, I didn't think of that kind of things. But if you actually just scroll down here and go down to land roll radar, you probably observed something. And that's the fact that if you look, you have air search capability on here. That doesn't mean you have the world's greatest air search capability. It just means you have some air search capability. And because of that, it's going to make it a little bit more challenging to actually do it. You also notice we're on the H band, by the way. So even though we have the ability to emit, our air search capabilities is actually fairly limited on account of the fact that our poor little radar dish here is just not designed to be powered up, look around significantly, and look back down again. As a matter of fact, our F-14s here are like, whoa, look at this. They are, uh, let's see, about 10 nautical miles away, and our SA-8 has no idea they're about to get a surprise here. That's, again, going back to that concept I had mentioned earlier, that it takes time to process that radar information. So even though the math says we should be able to get away with it, doesn't mean that we can, because the air search speed is a different speed than the fire control speed. So um, let's go ahead and uh, back my little guys up a little bit here. Oh, they're doing uh, Thank you so much, F-14s. You've proven my point beautifully. Go back, go back, go back, go back, go back, back. So now what I'm doing is I'm going to go grab my S-8 again here. I'll pop him real fast. And I'm going to increase his search time. Uh, remember, that's going to be two seconds. So we'll go ahead and up it to a whopping 10 seconds of search time now. So let's go ahead and speed up time a little bit here. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Control V. Uh, we're going to go ahead and he'll flip on his radar here. And he'll take a quick scan of the sky. And uh, he did not acquire anything. Let me just confirm that my numbers are correct there because I believe, <laughs> no, they're not correct at all. I'm pretty sure I typed in 10 there, but um, again, I must have closed the window too fast there. Something I do all the time. All right, silent five, four, three, two, one, emitting. So now our guy is blasting the sky with electronic emissions all over the place and really, really taking his time to take a look around. And then he's gonna go flip it back off again. So if we swing back over to the blue team real fast, You'll see we did not acquire that radar down there. We didn't pick it up at all on account of the fact, like I was mentioning, that that radar probably didn't spend very much time pointing in the direction of our friends here. So if I were to actually go over to this radar, press Control F9, if I set them to continuous mode, as opposed to uh, switching them to that normal um, kind of on and off mode, let's go ahead and give them a chance, radar comes on to full blast, we instantaneously acquire these two targets. So again, it's that little teeny tiny piece that you have to watch out for. Also notice, by the way, that our two F-14s immediately notice that there's a fire control radar looking at them. 
And again, because of the fact that it's got that combo fire control radar thing, it's making this very, very challenging. So as much as we would love to have a radar that we could flip on and off every two seconds, the reality is, is we need that continuous blast of energy from that style of radar to actually be able to get any sort of reliable targeting information here. So in this case, um, yeah, we've uh, kind of tipped our hand here that now there's a fire control <laughs> radar out there taking a look at them right now. So they're going to have a pretty good warning that they're about to be engaged by a particular platform. So what are our takeaways here? Uh, the first ones first is um, our attempt to use our super duper high speed platform does not work. It's just the mechanics of the search. It's just the mechanics of the types of radar that are involved for the purposes of the engagement. The second thing we saw is that with the intermittent, you have to make sure you turn a radar on long enough to be able to see everything around so that you can make tactical decisions. So I'm actually gonna grab this guy and go ahead and I'll shut this thing back off. Probably saying, why would you do that? Uh, the reason why is he's gotten a taste. That's all he needs. So now, of course, um, the camera on the SA2D can help us out actually targeting those. So I can actually go like this, and um, we can leave him on that mode now. And of course, what will happen is, is our uh, aircraft come ripping down here. Uh, they're going to be surprised that one of our control radars suddenly flips up online. And of course, in just a few minutes, uh, we probably can't see them, but he'll be firing his little SA8s. And they're already on the way. How do I know? Because I've seen these things a million times. And there they go. So you can see now those missiles are um, coming, reaching up to come say hello to my F-14s. And even though my F-14s are very, very low altitude, those SA-8s are just, they're so good at this kind of engagement. It's like they were literally, just, look at that guy get run down by that. They were designed for that kind of engagement. You know, you can see my poor F-14 there. I should be, oh, he's on fire. Get out, get out, get out, get out, get out, get out. I'm just curious. Oh, <laughs> I guess he didn't really have time to get out in that case. So that, that, that was bad. And now this guy's on fire. You need to get out of that plane. Get out of that plane. Get, get out, 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 get out. No, he's trying to beam the target to try to uh, ruin itself. <sighs> he exploded. All right, so as you can see, even though the tactical competition, the co tactical implications of this intermittent emission looks easier than it is, it's really a combination of many elements that makes it possible to be able to reliably kind of play the cat and mouse game that is electronic warfare. Enjoy.